fast to the perfection of your faith and not a building in San Antonio is going to hold what the Lord is about to do. Satan wants to make sure you never get this word. Satan is scared of this word. He has problems with this word. Satan don't mind you going to a church. He has problems with you going to a word church. Stand up and be the person that God called you to be. Not a building in San Antonio is going to hold what the Lord is about to do. Have an ear to hear what the Lord is going to say to you in Jesus' name. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 is, begins the foundational text. And, of course, we'll read that, do a brief review, move forward into today's stuff, which I'm telling you is going to bless you. You got to need to hear what the Lord's going to say to you. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it reads, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new, and all things are of God, who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto us, unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That's us. We've been made the righteousness of God in him. We already learned that the word made means to become, which means we were not that, but now we are that. Why? Because of what Jesus Christ did for me and you when he went to the cross for me and you to be able to pay sin's debt in full for me and you. But he also went as our propitiation, $75 word for the word substitute, which means God substituted for us on the cross through Jesus Christ. He put him in our place so that he can be able to receive what we were supposed to receive in that place so that we can then step into his place and live the thing out that he was living before he stepped into that place. He became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He went to the cross and took upon our separation from God and gave us a reconnection back to God. He took upon our sinfulness and accepted and gave us his sinlessness. He took upon our poverty. He gave us his wealth. He took upon our sickness. He gave us his health. He took upon our unrighteousness and he made us righteous so that we could be the righteousness of God in him so that from that point forward we can live like we are him. Because we have, sub he, just like he substituted for me and you and went through all that it is that we would have went through if we would have still been me and you, he now has separated, has substituted for me and you so that we can now live the life that he would have lived if he had not done that for me and you. Which means that we can now live sinless. We can start now live holy. We can now live connected to God. We can now live as God is our father. We can now live in the fullness of the life that God has in store for me and you. And we can also do what it is that he did too. And what did he do? He was in this world reconciling the world back unto God because God was in him reconciling the, the world unto himself. And that's who he in, he's in now. He's in me and you. So that we can now be used as the ministers of reconciliation and reconcile people to the world too. When Jesus walked this earth, he showed the people what it's like to have a person that really walks with God. He showed the people what it's like to really have a person have God as their father. There were religious leaders all over the place, but none of them ever walked in, much less gave away this kind of grace. But we have an opportunity to be able to be in his place and be able to live this thing out like he did too, full of grace and truth, fulfilling what he has called us to do. And that's to be the ministers of reconciliation that God has in store for me and you. Go back to verse 17. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. That's us right there. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are new, and all things are of God. We are now of God. We get our origin from God. We get our destination from God. We get our direction from God. We get everything from God now, which means that before we wasn't of that, but now we are of that because we've been made that. We are now made a people who begin to start living our lives like we really are of God. Like God has given us our direction, like God is the one that's showing us how to have a course correction, how God is the one that's telling us how to live our lives now, now that we are in Christ when we previously didn't live our lives in Christ. We had to learn how to be this. We have to be made this. We have to be trained and developed into this so that we can become the this that God wants us to be so he can send us out in the ministry to fulfill the people like he wants them to be filled and set them free because we are now of God. But for that, for that to happen, old things have to pass away. And behold, all things have to become new. Old things have to pass away, which means everything that was about the old us has to be no longer us. Now we have to be about the people who are of God. 
that's part of the new, that's the new me and you. We need to learn out who we are as the new me and you so that we can then be able to take on that identity and then live out that identity in the midst of a dark and fallen world so that they can be able to see what it's like to really have God in their life like, he's, like we're supposed to have God in our lives and live it out like we're supposed to do so that we can then reconcile people back to God too so that people can be able to see the changes that have happened in me and you and begin to see how we live like nobody else does other than a person who's in God like me and you so that they can then see the benefit of that, see the, the greatness that comes from that, and then want that same thing too. I'm talking about me and you. We are ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ that give people an opportunity to be that way too. Turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, please. We've been looking partially at who is the new me and you and me. We've been looking at who we are now as a people that are in Christ so that we can know who we are, cooperate with that, and then live out that in the midst of our lives. Know who we are, cooperate with that, and live that out for the rest of our lives. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, same thing was happening in the Corinthian church. He had to do it with them too because they were people who were in God but did not live their life like they were in God like they ought to do. Why? Because they only wanted the gifts. They wanted the manifestation of the charismata in the midst of their life so that they can then be able to have the gifts flowing all through their lives. But the problem was they even though they had the gifts, they didn't have the fruit that God wanted them to have which meant that they started making nothing but a bunch of noise and, and irritating noises when they lived their life like, like they didn't what they're supposed to. Verse 9, Paul was beginning to straighten them out by getting them to understand who they are so that they can live it out like they're supposed to. He says, for we are laborers together with God. That's speaking of Paul and apostles and, the, and Apollos and the other people that were ministering unto them. He said, for we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. We've been working on the husbandry part. We found out as God's husbandry, we are his cultivable. We are his farm. We are his cultivable. We are his farm, which means that God purchased us as farmland, expecting to get a produce to come from me and you, my man. He purchased us out as farmland, intention to us to be able to grow in our land, the things that he wants to grow in our land. Once again, I said it before, say it one more. This is not the farmland that's got a lot of livestock walking all over it. You know, dropping all kind of livestock pucky all over it. Because we already had a life that was full of mess. We already had a life that was messy. And then as we walk through our own life, then we get, then, then we get messy. And then carry that mess into other people's lives too. We was already doing that before. We don't do that no more. Now we have been put, made pucky free. God has cleaned up all the mess in you and me. It was in our life before we, he got us, but now that he got us, he's been cleaning that mess up out of our lives. Why? So that we can then be able to live the life that he wants us to do and cause the amber waves of grain to be able to grow for me and you. Where something is produced in our life that causes other people to have life. Where something is produced in our life that sustains other people's lives and gives them the quality of life that God wants them to live as a result of them being around me and you, receiving the fruit from me and you that ought to. Well, we found out that that word husbandry also means a land capable of being cultivated, which means once again, when God purchased you, you were not cultivated, but you have been cultivated and are being cultivated as a result of his purchasing you. God cleaning out all the things that would get in the way of you producing the harvest that he wants you to do. All those things that was left in by the previous landowner that was not supposed to be in you. But we purchased you just like you were. For by grace you were saved through faith, and that not of yourself, just the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. But yet once he purchased you, he starts a work in you. Because he that begins a good work in you will be faithful to perform it till the day of Jesus Christ. Not completed, begins a good work in you. Why? Because when he purchased you, that was just one step along the way of what he wanted to do with you. And there's other things he wanted to do. Are you listening to me up in here? Just like when you ladies buy a house, ladies in the house say, hey. hey, when you buy a house, you buy it as is. But then after you purchase it, you make it yours and you start getting stuff out of it that wasn't that wasn't supposed to stay in it and put stuff in it that ought to be in it. You start changing the decor so that it can be able to look more and more like it's really your place. That's what you do when you buy a place. Well, the same way when God bought you, you didn't look nothing like the way he wanted you to. But by the time he finished with you, better homes and garden. Now, you're listening to me up in here. That's what God wants to do with us, too. Praise God, because we're that kind of thing. And we're supposed to produce this fruit forever. Because he says, as long as the earth remains, there's seed, time, and harvest. We found out he didn't just, we didn't choose him. He chose us to be able to bring forth this fruit. He said, I ordained you that you would bring forth fruit. And that's what he purchased us for, is to be able to bring forth this fruit. 
and we found out that this fruit should remain, which means this isn't something that's supposed to happen in us and once in a while. It's supposed to happen to us all the time. This is something that you don't get from us one day, and then months and months later, it might grow another day. No, this is supposed to be in our life at day. At day of our life, this fruit is supposed to be manifesting in the midst of our lives. So once again, we ain't talking about no popcorn occurrences. We're talking about a continuous flowing of these things happening in the midst of our life. We looked in Galatians chapter 5 and started learning what that fruit is. And he said that the fruit of the Spirit is love. Praise God. Which means because of our connection with God and because of our openness to God, love flows through me and you. Not our love, his love. The love that he has for the world and the people that's in this world too which is love level four, one that most folk don't walk in. I'm talking about most folk don't walk in. Now, we walk in it because we are children of the most high God. We are, we are the branches. He is the vine, and we are plugged into him at this time. And because we're plugged into him, what he wants the world to have comes through me and you. Notice my terminology. What he wants the world to have comes through me and you. Because remember, the fruit isn't for you. It's for the ones that will pluck it off of you the ones that come and get it from you. The tree don't benefit from the apples that come off of it. We are the ones that benefit from the apples that come from it. The grape does, the vine does not, grape vine does not benefit from the grapes that come from it. The, the people who pluck the grapes from the vine are the ones that benefit from it. And this isn't about you. Look at your neighbor and say, this ain't about you. This is about what the God wants to do through you so that he, he can do through you. Because he said, apart from me, ye can do nothing, which means none of these things will ever be done unless you are con connected to him and open to him like you ought to be. But if you are, you're going to be that righteous tree that brings forth the fruit that God has in store for, you, for other people through you and me. And we've been learning about that fruit. First Corinthians chapter 13, please. We've been looking at that love because once again, everybody says, oh, yeah, I love, I love. No, we'll see. No, no, no. You, we're talking about the way God say love. Praise God. Because once again, the world can love, levels one, two, and three. But the world can't love level four like you and me. Because the only one that can love level four is the ones that have walked through salvation's door. And along with being connected to God, remain open to God. Because we can close it up too and be able to make sure it don't flow through me and you. That's one of the reasons why, don't question, a, that, that's one of the reasons why a person can be a Christian and not operate in this. But that's why he's coming to his church right now, because he wants his church, his Christians, to operate like this. That's why he gave a clear indication of how this love operates when we have this love. And we already learned that just like light isn't recognized for what light really is till you run it through a spectrum, then you see all of the different things that that light really is, so that you can be able to see what's that, what was in that light. Same thing with the word love. When you run it through the spectrum called people and start dealing with people, then you find out whether this love is really operating in you like it ought to. Because we found out there's certain actions and certain things that love does not do. There's things that love does, there's things that love does not do. And if this level four love is being operated by me and you, we've been looking at the things that we will do in our lives and how God will flow through our lives to do what he wants to do for the people. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse four says, charity suffereth long and is kind. We dealt with that before, and, 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 and I'm glad to see you operating like that. Charity envieth not, vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Praise God, we learned about all of that. We learned that we don't operate in none of that. We do it the way God wants us to do it. That it doth not behave itself unseemingly. We learned, worked on that one last time. We don't work, operate unseemingly, nor seek our own nor are we easily provoked. We ain't all easily provoked. We're not all touchy and fretful, easily irritated. We don't be going off on folk and stuff like that, in traffic or out of traffic, in our house or not in our house, at work or not at work. We don't do it anytime. We don't be like bugging out. That's what the world do. We don't bug out like the rest of the world do. That's one of the ways they're supposed to tell that we of God. It's because they're looking at everybody else bug out but you. They're watching everybody else go off on folk but you. When it comes time to cussing out, you leave yourself out. You say, no, I don't have nothing to do with that because I'm of God. I love my brother too much to go out like that. I love my brother too much to be able to do that to them. 
I don't care what they've done to me. It didn't set me free of the love that God put inside of me, nor the responsibility to love like I ought to be. And I'm going to continue to love regardless. Jesus did it, so we can do it too. Because why? Because it's his love through flow, that's flowing through me and you. Amen. And we also think no evil about folk. Praise God. We don't reckon the evil that they've done. We don't hold grudges. We don't hold to the account what they did and go pay them back later. Praise God, thinking like, yeah, pay back some mother. Yeah, but love is a father. And the father wants his love to be able to flow through you. And he the head of the household, and we do it. We, we do what he do. Is anybody listening to me up in here? Let's work on another one of these things, praise God, today, which I'm telling you is going to bless you. And even more important, it's going to bless some folk around you in Jesus' name. Now, remember, we're talking about the fruit of love that's supposed to be found in God's husbandry. That's love, level four. Everybody say level four. level four. More directly, we're actually talking about the behavior that is found only amongst the people of God. The behavior that's found only among the people of God, which means there's a certain way we behave that the world does not behave. There's certain things that ways that we behave that the world does not behave. Behavior that's only the people of God who operate in level four can do. That's what we do. We do stuff that can't nobody else do. We're in a class all by ourselves. We are holy people separated under God to be able to live this thing out like God wants us to do. That's because it's behavior that can only come from level four, which flows through you and me and you. And even more directly, we're talking about the behavior that's found only among the people of God in their dealings with other people. In their dealings with other people. Which means when we interact and deal with other people, living in the midst of and, 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 and cohabitate, not like shacking, but cohabitate with other people. Praise God. When we, when we live with, around folk, we do things that other folk don't do. I said we do things that other folk don't do. Mm-hmm. We love our brethren. That's rare. Because most folk don't love their brother. Not in, definitely don't love them level four. But we do. Therefore, there's things that we'll do and not do concerning our brother. There's things that we'll do and not do concerning our brother. We love our brethren as ourselves, which is a powerful statement. Because if we love our brothers as ourselves, therefore, there's things that we'll do and not do concerning our brother because we wouldn't want it done to me and you. I said, we wouldn't want it done to me and you. Or we would want it done to me and you. We'll operate according to the golden rule. Oh. And that is, do unto others as you would have done unto you. Do unto others as you would have done unto you. So the ones that I'm about to read down now, we're about to go down now, are ones that you will want done to you. And so since you will want them done to you, if you love your brother like you ought to, then you'll do them to other people too. And some of these are ones that you wouldn't want anybody to do to you. Couldn't stand it if they did it to you. So because of that, you can't stand it when it happens to anybody else too. And you won't do it. You won't have no parts in it. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. Now, these, the, now the next two go together. The next two go together. Which means I can't do without one without doing the other. Because they're two sides of the same coin. I can't do one without the other. It's two sides of the same coin. If I give you a coin with a heads on it, turn it over, it's got a tail on it. If I give you a coin with a tail on it, turn it over, it's got a head on it. If I give, if I give you a coin with a head on it, but it's got no tail on it, throw it away. That's counterfeit. That ain't real. Which means that both have to be able to happen because one comes with the other. The next two are, rejoice is not in iniquity, but rejoice is in the truth. Rejoice is not in iniquity, but rejoice is in the truth. See, people who love level four don't operate like people in the world concerning our reaction to the things that people do and don't do. We don't operate according to the world, like the other people in the world, concerning our reaction to what people do and don't do. It's not only what we don't do ourselves. It's not only what we don't do to somebody else. We also don't react to what happens with other people, the way the world do. The world reacts to people and things happening in their lives differently than how we react to people and things happening in our lives. 
By reaction, I mean that we don't respond to things the way the world does. We don't respond to things the way the world does. Whereas the world will respond to things that's happening in people's lives, respond to things that are going on in life in ways that we don't respond to. They'll smile about things we don't smile about. They'll laugh about things we don't laugh about. They'll, they'll, they'll be angry about things that we're happy about because we don't respond the way they do to what happens to people around me and you. See, people who love level four respond differently than the world does concerning what happens to a person or doesn't happen to a person? What happens to a person or what doesn't happen to a person? What happens in a person's life or doesn't happen in that person's life? What a person does or doesn't do is responded differently by us than it is by the people that's around me and you. That's because a person who loves level four is a person who doesn't rejoice in iniquity. We do not rejoice in iniquity. That's whether the iniquity is something that a person is involved in or whether the iniquity is something that has happened to a person. We don't rejoice in iniquity. That's whether the iniquity is something that the person is involved in or whether the iniquity is something that happens to that person. We don't rejoice in it. Either or, we don't do it. Why? Because we don't rejoice in iniquity because we love level four. We don't do either or because we love level four. We don't rejoice in iniquity. We don't rejoice in iniquity. Why don't we rejoice in iniquity? Because we love level four. And that love is flowing through us from God, which means we have God's response to what's happening to people. We have God's response to what's going on in the lives of people. We have God's response, which means when you see one of the reasons why this is going to be so important is because we got a church today, not us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, not us, but the church of the living God in general, which is still us. We have a church today that responds differently to what's going on in people's lives than what God responds. Who thinks differently about what's going on. Tell them it ain't too late. They can still come. Praise God. Who responds differently in people's lives than the way God responds in people's lives. Because things that God can't stand, the church has no problem with no more. The things that God says, I don't want people involved in at all. It's people that, that the, the things that the church is saying, they ain't got no problem at all. And so therefore, people are looking at the church to get God's response, seeing a mixed response on things, which response that's wide enough, varied enough in such a way where everybody gets a chance to see the church respond the way they want to respond. So they figure like I'm good responding like this. Amen. But God is coming to his at this time, talking to his at this time about being his at this time so we can react and respond properly to things that are happening in and through people's lives. We are people who love level four who are people who don't re rejoice in iniquity. That word rejoices right there means to be cheerful. Emphasis on cheer, being full. To be cheerful, that is calmly happy or well off. To be cheerful, that is calmly happy or well off. See, people who love level four are not a people who are cheerful about iniquity. We're not cheerful about iniquity. We're not all cheerful while iniquity is happening. While ch ch well, iniquity is going on. We ain't all cheerful. We ain't walk around giggling about it, enjoying every moment of it. Well, no, no, no. This, that's iniquity. We're not calmly happy about iniquity that our father ain't happy about at all. We ain't, we, we ain't calmly happy about iniquity that our father ain't happy about at all. We're not sitting around grinning while the devil is winning, causing iniquity to be able to happen in people's lives and or getting people to operate iniquity in their lives. We're not grinning about none of that. We're not pleased with any of that. Why? Because our father isn't pleased with any of that. And it's his love for the people that's flowing through us. It causes us to respond the way he would respond. We're not considered, we, we don't consider anybody well off who's involved in iniquity or whose life has been ravaged by iniquity. We don't we see it well off. We don't see people, because a lot of times we see people that is operating in iniquity and we look up to them. 
We see somebody that can run for president, cuss folk out, go off on people, do all kind of stuff, and because they got some money, we think that's good. Or we can have a lying person who lie at the drop of a hat, say whatever they need to say to get your vote, and we'll come through just like that. Oh, I, I look up to them. Pardon me? That's a liar. But we respond differently. Till the head has become the tail and the tail has become the head, all the front runners are people that you would normally throw out in, a, in any situation. But the church is supporting foolishness like this. Why? Because we're not connected and open to God like we ought to. That's why we allow something else to flow through other than what God intends in terms of the reactions and, the, and things that we have. Because we don't consider anybody well off who's involved in iniquity. Who do our kids look up to? Rappers who speak nothing about things but everything against your father, live a lifestyle totally the opposite of your father. They're about everything that ain't got nothing to do with your father, but they look up to them and want to be like them. Dress like them, walk like them, talk like them, spend money for them and everything else like that. And God say, excuse me, ain't that my money? You sending that way? Whereas if the church of the living God ever start acting like the church of the living God, iniquity would go broke overnight. Iniquity would go broke overnight. It would have no lifeblood called money in it because the church wouldn't be spending its money in it. Who knows? They might tithe with it instead. The money, the, amen. Well, that's another teaching. We ain't got time for that. Praise God. And we can just cut it off from where it ain't supposed to go. That would be wonderful. Because a lot of this would not happen. I said it would not happen. So we don't consider anybody well off who are involved in iniquity, and whose life has been ravaged by iniquity. That word iniquity right there means injustice. It means injustice. Well, God is a God of justice. Y'all do know that about him, right? God is a God of justice, which means we don't, we, we, he, he's not about injustice. Our God is not about injustice. And since we're his, we ain't either. Since our God isn't about injustice, we ain't about injustice. Since our God doesn't appreciate injustice, we don't appreciate injustice. And since we're his, we ain't either. And we definitely don't rejoice in it. Not an injustice. Injustice, first definition. The quality or fact of being unjust. The quality or fact of being unjust. See, we're people who don't rejoice when we see people being unjust or when we see unjust things happening in people's lives. We don't, we don't rejoice when we see unjustness or when we see unjust things happen in our lives. We don't side with wrong against right. We always side with right against wrong. That's why the word injustice also means a violation of rights of others, a violation of rights of others. So we don't rejoice when we see a violation of other people's rights. I said we don't, vi we don't rejoice when we see a, a violation of other people's rights. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, don't, we don't rejoice. Hallelujah. Look, I want to introduce you to my new boyfriend. I want to introduce you to my new girlfriend. Excuse me, you're married. Well, why can't you be happy for me? Because this is injustice. You can breathe now. I want you to see my new TV. Oh, where'd you get that? Best Buy? Where'd you get that? No, I got it hot. Excuse me? You got it what? Hot. I mean, hey, you know, save a brother money, save a sister some money. I mean, uh, come on, watch TV with me. No, man, no. It's all right. I can't roll like that. It's just a TV. It's injustice. You violated somebody else's right and ripped them off so that you can benefit. Pastor, I won the lottery. No, what you did is you ripped off thousands upon thousands and tens of thousands of people's money. How do I rejoice in that with you? That would be like you walk around and say, hey, look, Pastor, I'm loaded. True enough, I bust a cap in somebody's head and took them out, but I got money. No, see, it matters what you do and how you got what you got. That's injustice. 